It's down the road we go. Happy Monday. It's the 27th day of April 2020. This is Wake Up on Anchee Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. We're back at it for another week. It is week number six beginning today of Governor Inslee's Stay Home, Stay Healthy order, which has uh, <clears throat> it's been a strange six weeks, hasn't it? It's affected uh, all aspects of society. There's no getting around it. I mean, businesses are shuttered are operating on limited hours with social distancing. There's, there's no school. There's no Apple Blossom Festival. I can't eat out. Can't get my hair cut. There's no sports. There's no movies to go to. But we go forward. Don't really have much of a choice. Uh, this hopefully will be the last week of this. There's going to be some, we'll know more, obviously, by the end of this week because the governor's stay home, stay healthy order expires at 11.59 on Monday night, one week from today, and we'll see where we go forward from there. We have uh, some COVID-related news when we get to the news. There is a lot of news. There's a lot of sports to get to as well. We'll wrap up the Seahawks draft. Also talk about the We Want to Go Fishing protest, which was held Saturday morning here, uh, right, uh, right not about three blocks down from our studio on the Columbia River. We got a report from that. Uh, coming up when we get to sports. Hopefully they'll be able to open up uh, recreational fishing here in the not-too-distant future. We also have everything else that you're used to. We have the obscure holiday and birthdays and all that other stuff. And uh, on Friday I mentioned that we were going to air Eric Granstrom's interview with Jeremy Anders, who is the general manager of the Wenatchee Valley Super Bowl. We'll get caught up with uh, Jeremy. But uh, surprisingly enough, uh, Jefferson Robbins uh, was able to interview the governor himself, Governor Jay Inslee, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with their very own Jefferson Robbins. That was done on Friday via Zoom, and we're gonna have that conversation in its entirety with uh, Governor Inslee and Jefferson Robbins in the back half of the show. We'll air Eric's interview with Jeremy on Tuesday. So there you go, and a bit of an unsettled forecast really for the rest of the week. The nicest day is probably gonna be Tuesday and Wednesday if you'd like mostly sunny skies and mild conditions, and I'm one of those people who do. It's three minutes after the hour, 48 degrees with high clouds. Let's get you going. Let's take you around the valley with our valley view uh, views from uh, the SkyFi system. Uh, the cross camera is zoomed back today. You can see the high clouds. That's a cool view as they move over the Wenatchee Valley. And it's going to be progressive weather. That's what they're calling it. Scattered showers, uh, some sun, some wind. Wind is the big thing today. It's going to be the most uh, noteworthy of our weather events today, another windy day. It's been fairly windy over the last 10 days or so, but a good looking view of the Wenatchee Valley. The sun came up at 5.50 this morning. The sun will set at 8.08 tonight, 14 hours and 18 minutes of daylight. Saturday's high was 68 with a trace of rain. Yesterday's high was 65, felt warmer. Our normal high would be 65, but we're still in a drought. They, the rainy season, <clears throat> we don't really have one, but they call it the rainy season. The National Weather Service does. It begins August 1st, and since August 1st, we've had 3.03 inches of rain. We should have 5.86 inches of rain, which is our normal rainfall, beginning October 1st. So we're almost three inches behind on the rainfall we are supposed to be having. So we are definitely in a drought. Hopefully, we'll get a drop or two this week. Again, it's a, it's a mixed bag. The weather's all over the board this week. We'll give you those details. Camera 2. Let's pay a visit to Omi Gardens. Again, a spectacular view. Look at how the sun comes in and just kisses around the Wenatchee Valley. It's not high enough to give uh, the East Wenatchee part of our beautiful area the sunshine, but uh, downtown Wenatchee plainly in view. And again, this camera is, a, is pretty much the same elevation as the cross camera, maybe a little bit higher. And instead of pointing to the north, it points to the south. They're, nice, they're like the sisters, or like the cameras are sisters. They're, they they complement each other very well indeed. So good morning to the Wenatchee Valley. Looking to the south from Omi Gardens. Camera three. Hello, Kashmir. Da-na-na, da-na-na, da-na-na. Beautiful Kashmir, Washington. The orchards are hanging in there. The people are hanging in there. The cars are not driving anywhere. It's Kashmir, Washington, U.S. of A. Is this the day or is it next week where they close the, uh, the Goodwin Bridge? It's next week. Thank you, Megan, for that. So that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, when the West Kashmir Bridge, that will be you know called the Goodwin Bridge, is closed as they begin that replacement project. You'll have to use some detours for you Kashmirians out there. Is that what they call themselves, Kashmirians? <laughs> Kashmirites. Okay, there you go. We'll double check on that. Camera number four. A gorgeous view of uh, a tower and a tree. What are we looking at? 
Black Mountain. Wow. Okay. Why didn't I see that? I mean, you must have moved that in a, in a uh, to a direction I'm not used to, Megan. So, yeah, Megan says it was a rainbow earlier, not one now. So that's Black Mountain, but normally we have that pointed right down towards Leavenworth. I think she has that pointed maybe a little bit more to the north. I'm speculating here. Uh, there's, you can see some transmission equipment there to the left, it looks like. And it, oh, but she says that's a tree. Again, I can't see very. I need my glasses. I need my glasses and I need a haircut. I need a lot of things. <laughs> Thank goodness I have a song in my heart as we get going here on this uh, make it singing into my earpiece there will be none of that young lady uh it is uh six minutes after the hour we have a couple of slides to show for you from the national weather service first of all pretty much what we're looking at for the weather today going to be a little wet but real windy today uh occasional light rain early this morning it should be passing through by the time we get to uh, you know we're going to have isolated showers it's a possibility till about noon or so then we'll have a few sun breaks for the Wenatchee Valley. It's going to be windy today. Those details are coming up. So it's going to be not like it was on Saturday and Sunday. It was pretty pleasant. Today is going to be a transition day as the system comes through. The big story today, once again, the wind. We're going to deal with it again. Here's your wind gust forecast for today. Once again, you'll see that blue circle in the middle of your screen. That's where they're a little worried about some patchy blowing dust. And uh, maybe if a grass fire gets up and going, it could really... Take off. They had a minor one in the Palisades over the weekend. We'll have that uh, information for you when we get to the news. But uh, the officials for the Grand County Fire Department said this Palisades fire, if they didn't hop on it right away, could have really taken off. So any kind of fire that gets going with these kind of strong winds uh, could be an issue. And of course, they've been plowing the fields out in the Columbia Basin, and that loosens up the dirt, which means you could get some blowing dust, uh, that kind of gunky stuff. Uh, along the I-90 corridor, but everybody's going to be dealing with some wind today. Let's take you let's take you step by step through the process. Patriot Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling gives your home a hug. Again, an isolated shower off and on today. We'll see sunshine for the most part, but it's going to be breezy. A west wind about 13 to 21 miles an hour, picking up in intensity this afternoon. We'll have the occasional gust above 30 miles an hour. Whatever rain we get this morning, about a 30% chance of rain, we could use it but it'll just be the passing shower, and again, a high of about 70. It's 48 right now. Most of clear tonight, breezy in the early evening hours, and it dies down. So by sunset, the wind will be pretty consistent at about 20 miles an hour. It's a northwest wind, and then it dies down after midnight to about 10 miles an hour. But again, gusts above 30 at times tonight. Tuesday looks to be about the nicest day of the week if you like the sunshine. A high of about 72, no rain in the forecast, very little wind. Tuesday looks mighty fine indeed. 49 for the overnight lows. The clouds roll in on Tuesday night. Uh, system number two comes in Wednesday. Going to give us quite a bit of cloud cover. Maybe an afternoon raindrop. Probably not, but it's out there. Certainly milder, as you can see, a high of 77 on Wednesday. Wednesday night, slight chance of light rain. Lots of clouds. We'll get down to 50 for the overnight low. Thursday, partly cloudy, 68. Lots of sunshine on Friday. High of about 70. And then we go to, again, a tad unsettled weather for the weekend, the first weekend in May, which should have been the big apple blossom weekend. It's not. Slight chance of rain on Saturday, partly cloudy skies, about 70 degrees. Also a little breezy at times on Saturday. And then Sunday, partly cloudy, better chance of rain, and a high of 64 degrees. The big story today, again, is going to be the wind with some possible rain. Good looking Tuesday, cloudy, but fairly dry on Wednesday, and then kind of up and down the ladder we go. Temperatures slightly above normal for our afternoon highs. The overnight low is right around the normal mark. Uh, with the exception of Wednesday, it'll be milder than normal with the clouds holding the heat in. So that's your forecast in detail from the National Weather Service. That way, if you don't like the weather, you can blame the government. Uh, we're going to take a break at 10 minutes after the hour and come back with your Monday morning news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Crow in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. 
I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and Air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. Back at it with a few high clouds, 48 degrees. We'll have quite a bit of sunshine once we get to late morning, early afternoon, and then sunny the rest of the day. Quite windy at times. We'll top off at about 68 or 69. Beautiful Tuesday. And then unsettled weather returns really for the rest of the week and into the weekend. And 11 minutes after the hour, here's what's making headlines. We have our first confirmed COVID-19 death in Okanagan County, a 44-year-old woman who died back on April 18th, uh, Okanagan County Coroner Dave Rodriguez said the woman did not have under any underlying health conditions, but she had been sick at her home for several days. Rodriguez said she was not tested for the virus until after she passed away. Health officials are only saying that she died at her residence, and her residence is in the central area of Okanagan County. Okanagan County Public Health and the Colville Tribes have been working together to investigate the contacts of all people who have tested positive for the virus in Okanagan County, the Colville Indian Reservation accounts for nine of the county's 19 positive tests. Five more cases uh, were uh, uh, relegated to the Metow Valley area. A Mattawa man in his 50s became the third Grant County resident to die from COVID-19. The Grant County Health District confirming the death on Friday, saying the man was not employed prior to or during his illness died at his home, we're told. It was Grant County's first death from the coronavirus since April 3rd. There have been 157 confirmed cases in Grant County with 52 of those in Quincy and 38 in the Mattawa area. As you know by now, Washington Governor Gay, uh, Jay Inslee announced on Friday that he will be easing limits on some construction projects under his stay home, stay safe order. Appearing at a press conference with building and industry representatives, the governor said he'd be signing an order allowing what he called low-risk projects with strict social distancing requirements to move forward. He said whether it will mean changes or coming for restrictions on the healthcare industry, businesses, and recreations, rec recreationists, that has yet to be determined. So for the other folks that are chomping at the bit to get back to work, and I know we all are, what we're doing and what I hope to replicate is what we've done in the construction industry. While we're waiting for that time where we can turn that dial to prepare for that, to build the protocols that are necessary to go back safely when we can. But we're gonna make that decision based on data and we've got all kinds of data from infection rates to hospitalization rates to percentage to positives. And we'll share that uh, probably, in fact, we'll have one day when we talk about that tomorrow. Uh, uh, in depth. And uh, once again, our very own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to interview the governor one on one on Friday via Zoom. We'll have that interview for you in the back half of this program. When health officials tested for a coronavirus last week at a Stemilt worker housing site in East Wenatchee, they were in for a big surprise. 36 out of 71 workers there tested positive without obvious symptoms. Barry Kling is the chief administrator for the Chelan Douglas Health District, and he told us that those findings are changing local strategies for detecting and containing the virus. There is testing going on at a couple of additional sites because we want to get a little bit of perspective on whether this was just an outlier or is fairly representative of what's happening in other housing. Um, I doubt seriously that it, it's um, an extreme outlier. I have a feeling we're going to find um, a significant number of asymptomatic
real effect of this of this experience though has been to make us think differently about the advice to make decisions on the basis of symptom screening. Because if there are this many asymptomatic positive cases, screening for symptoms doesn't really tell you, you know, who needs to be tested and who needs to stay home from work and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's really the big revelation behind this. And that will have implications for testing, not just for followers, but, but for a lot of the things that we're doing right now. Um, and it highlights the need for much, much greater testing capacity than we have. We have relatively small numbers because we're a relatively small population, and small numbers bounce around a lot more than uh, larger numbers from larger populations. So it's a little harder to look at the curve and say, you know, this is where we are. My take is we're probably about three weeks behind the west side in terms of when we started. There's no reason to think we'd be different from every other community in the pattern, the overall pattern of the epidemic. So I expect us to peak um, a week or two or three after Puget Sound. They may be peaking now in Puget Sound area, and um, so I would think we're probably going to peak um, soon if we haven't already. But um, I'm trying to keep reminding people that, you know, when you're on the peak, you're only halfway home. you got to go all the way back down to, to camp. Um, and uh, sometimes that's the hardest part of the trip because you're tired um, from the climb. Speaking of the Chelan Douglas Health District, after consulting with the Health District, the Wenatchee Valley Farmers Market is going to open as scheduled on Saturday, May 9th at the Pibus Public Market. Pibus Executive Director Leslie Freitag said the market will have about 15 to 20 vendors and the number of customers allowed at any one time will be limited. Now, in addition, there will be hand washing stations and extra spacing between the vendors, the market will be open from 8 a.m. to 1 o'clock. Frytag said they're looking for volunteers to help regulate the number of people in the vendor area and to direct and inform visitors. If you're interested in volunteering, you can give Pibus a call at 663-8712. The Washington State Department of Natural Resources say the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way they're training for and fighting wildfires. This year, the DNR has already seen more than 200 wildfires just this year, most of them involving debris fires that got out of control. Alice Amaro with DNR says fire crews are adapting to the new reality. Hi, I'm Allison Morrow with your DNR report. Precautions taken to stop the spread of COVID-19 are also affecting work to both prevent and fight wildfire. For instance, there are four crew members per engine whose interaction with other engines is now limited and tracked. We want to protect our communities from wildland fires, but we want to further that protection by keeping social distancing in place so we can protect our communities better. The training for those crews also looks different as meetings are no longer happening in central locations. When we bring seasonals on, um, this year is going to be tremendously different. Um, we used to have crew meetings every Wednesday, and this year it sounds like um, the engines aren't going to be able to, to come up to Deer Park for those crew meetings. Um, and we're going to be adapting, um, you know, bringing overhead to those engines. Crews are already dealing with wildfire, especially in the northeast region, where more than 100 wildfires have already ignited. Mostly due to people debris burning. They're ex it's escaping. It's getting away from them. It has been pretty breezy throughout the whole spring so far, and that's really drying out those light and uh, flashy fuels. Um, and so it doesn't take a lot, especially if you have a debris pile that's putting off quite a bit of heat. It doesn't take a lot of wind for it to get out. And we're just out there. We're regulating burning standards. We're providing them education so that they can do this more safely at a more convenient time. Forest health work will continue to thin underbrush and prune trees to keep fires from spreading. That work is considered essential amid the COVID pandemic in order to protect homes and forest land. Those pieces of land would be um, less prepared and less safe in the event of a wildfire. Um, the fire would burn more intensely and it would be a lot more intensive to put out. Local fire districts, federal partners, all of them were already spread thin and finding those resources, especially this time of year, is getting difficult and having that extra support with us involved is very beneficial. Washington State has already seen almost 200 wildfires so far this year. You can add one more to the list. Speaking of wildfires, a wildfire over the weekend near Palisades Road and Wagon Road in Douglas County contained to about two acres after a quick response from firefighters from two counties. Grant County Fire District 13 was first on the scene and said that the fire was burning in an area that could have led to a significant and prolonged 
wildfire incident. The fire is under investigation, but the fire district indicates that somebody burning in windy conditions was likely the cause. Shalong County Sheriff Brian Burnett says his new chief of patrol will come from within the ranks. There he is, Sergeant Adam Musgrove. He'll take the reins on July 1st, supervising patrol operations for Chelan County. He's been with the force since 2012. He's now a night shift patrol sergeant. He was a police officer in Cedro Woolley until he joined the Chelan County Sheriff's Office. He replaced his chief of patrol, Rick Johnson, of course, who's going to become the new chief of police for East Wenatchee come June 1st. One more fire item. If you've ever wanted to have a fire truck of your very own, now's your chance. Yep, Chelan Fire and Rescue is auctioning off three of its response vehicles, a 1992 Seagrave engine, a 2000 IHC rescue truck, and a water tender that they think is about 30 years old. They're not sure. The department is, is accepting, there's the tender, the, the department is accepting bids until May 20th. The minimum offer is $5,000 on the engine and the tender, but you got to bid at least $70,000 to get the rescue vehicle. For information, you can go to Chelan Fire and Rescue's website. Serious offers only, please. And that's a look at what's making news at 22 minutes after the hour on this Monday. I still don't know how we do it, but we're able to cobble together a newscast every night, Monday through Friday. Grant Olson is the anchor. And to preview tonight's news, here's the man himself. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll have the latest local news regarding COVID-19. I'll have your much warmer and much drier North Central Washington weather forecast. And Eric Granstrom will be along as well with a look at all the day's sports. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. Hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Had a chance to see Grant on a social basis over the weekend, and he said, you're getting gray. That was so nice of him. Yes, I am, Grant. I'm getting gray. Look at the bottom of your screen. That's all the ways you can get a hold of us. You can pick up the telephone and give us a call. If you'd like to email, and I'm a huge fan of email, it's news at ncwlife.com. News at ncwlife.com. If you go to our website, you can submit a news tip directly, or you can hit the contact us icon and fill out a form that way. Or you can go to our Facebook page and drop us a line via Facebook Messenger. We're going to take a break and come back. Sports talking about, well, mad fishermen or lack thereof, and we'll wrap up the Seahawks draft as well. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up on Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty, and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Hi, my name is Todd Mill with the rail station in Alehouse and Wenatchee. During this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we're urging you to stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. As an essential business during this crisis, we're doing our best to serve meals to the children in this community for free to make sure that nobody goes hungry. When this crisis passes and it's safe to do so, we hope you'll come down and join us at the rail station in Alehouse. But until then, stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Thank you. Welcome back, 24 minutes after the hour. Sports, 26 boats full of angry anglers took to the Columbia River in Wenatchee on Saturday morning, of course, protesting the state's closure of fishing. In addition, another group gathered near the center of the George Cellar Bridge. They waved uh, signs and they were holding fishing rods to show their dissatisfaction. Ben Holton was the organizer of the Let Us Fish Wenatchee event and he provided us with this video. People need something to do, you know. And, uh, Fishermen, you know, they're out there on the rivers, you know, they don't do anything, they don't bother anybody, they just catch their fish, they go home, you know. Uh, it's a wonderful sport, you know, we've been doing it for hundreds of years, and, uh, you know, it's just, people need to get out of their houses and go do things, you know. Uh, after I retired, they're pretty much, uh, I got a most of my stuff done. I fished forever since uh, even before I retired. Uh, but fishing is a great sport. You get your kids out of the house. You obviously don't see, uh, you probably don't see this many people at the boat dock at, at Rufus Wood on either boat dock. 
So crowded boat docks is, is kind of a non-starter. You don't even see them on Lake Roosevelt. Social distancing is not an issue for fishing. We came out here today to support all the other fishermen and and uh, all the other people who have lost businesses and and their entire livelihoods because Governor Inslee can't open up our state and let us get on with it. I think that the state is overreaching with the no fish ban. I think that um, this is good, clean family. Uh, we, we can totally monitor a six feet uh, 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 division between people. Uh, when we fish, we don't fish in clubs, especially from the shore, or if we're in a boat, it's more of a family activity. And I think that the state overreached when they decided that this needed to be banned. Now, for you fishermen, you may be getting some good news later on this week. Governor Inslee is hinting at reopening fishing soon. There's word coming out of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. It could be as early as next Monday or next Tuesday. The Seahawks wrapped up the 2020 NFL Draft on Friday and Saturday. They selected seven more players. There they are. They ended up picking up two defensive ends, two tight ends, a running back, an offensive guard, and a wide receiver. Following their first-round pick on Thursday, when they took Texas Tech linebacker Jordan Brooks, Seattle took Tennessee defensive end Darrell Taylor, or Darrell Taylor, I should say, in the second round. LSU guard Damian Lewis was a third-round selection. Stanford tight end Colby Parkinson and Miami running back DJ Dallas selected in the fourth round. Syracuse defensive end Alton Robinson, he became a Seahawk in the fifth round. Wide receiver Freddie Swain drafted out of Florida in round number six. And LSU tight end Stephen Sullivan in the seventh round. Despite the challenges of working under social separation guidelines and the pandemic, the 2020 NFL Draft went off without a hitch. It's something that Seattle General, Man General Manager John Schneider and Coach Pete Carroll were very pleased about. These are tough times for everybody right now, and you know I'm, I'm I'm very proud that the National Football League was able to put this together, and that you know that all of us uh, scouts, coaches, uh, you know owners, and you know the commissioner, everybody we 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 got through this and and put it together for everybody because I've been getting a lot of feedback that there was it was it was a lot of entertainment and it was a lot of relief for people and provided a lot of hope. So. Uh, yeah, Pete, did you want to add to that? Or? I think it's worth mentioning about really the vision right from the top of that, Roger, because we've talked to Roger quite a bit during this process uh, about, you know, how he's going to pull this off and how we're going to do it. And he really gave really sound leadership and strong leadership and had a real vision that it would be a, a, a could be a great event for the country under the circumstances. And, and everybody's looking for a little uplift right now. And hopefully that it served as that. It sure seemed like it. We didn't get to watch the broadcast as much, but just the effort by everybody to pull this off and to make it happen, uh, it's pretty magical. This this was this was a big challenge, you know, and, and uh, we've learned a lot, probably evolved quite a bit more than you would, you might think um, in, in the way we'll do things in the future and all that. So, uh, but all in all, I'm glad it was a good, successful event. We're really excited about what we've been able to do and, and uh, looking forward to sharing it with you. Next up for Seattle and the rest of the league for that matter, they got to gather remotely via video conference to talk to their draft picks and tell them what they need them to do until they can actually get together as a group and start working out. Of course, the Seahawks ended up with a glut of offensive linemen, and you can say goodbye to two of them. Uh, just coming in uh, to us about an hour ago, offensive guard DJ Fluker given his release, and Justin Britt, by the way, is also gone. It's going to open up some cap space, so they had a bunch of offensive linemen. Uh, they don't anymore. Speaking of offensive linemen, former Wenatchee Panther and Washington Husky Trey Adams didn't get drafted, but he's heading to Buffalo. The offensive tackle signed as an undrafted free agent to play for the Bills. He signed on Saturday. That's according to his dad, Bud Adams. Of course, following his sophomore season, Trey was expected to be one of the top offensive linemen in the draft, but he hurt his knee, he hurt his back, he had to redshirt his junior year. He, of course, because of the pandemic, he couldn't work out and show the scouts what he could do in person. They all get a chance to show his ability with the Buffalo Bills. Best of luck to Trey Adams. A decision on the 2020 Summer Collegiate Baseball season for the West Coast League won't be made until next month, but the league is already down a team. The Bellingham Bells on Friday announcing they're not going to field a team this summer because they don't have a place to play. The Mayor of Bellingham announced late last week that all public parks and facilities would remain closed <coughs> excuse me, through the end of August, and that includes a historic Joe Martin Field where the Bells play their home games. So the West Coast League may feel some added pressure too because 
The Cape Cod League, which is the premier summer collegiate league in the country, announced the cancellation of its season. The 10-team league said Friday its executive committee made the decision as it was a unanimous vote, quote, based on the health concerns and safety needs of all involved, and quote, the West Coast League is scheduled to start their season the first weekend in June. We shall see. Here's what's coming up this week on the NCAA Life Channel from sports. It's more great games of our past tomorrow night. Unified basketball. This will be fun between Wenatchee and uh, Eastmont. Don't miss a minute of that broadcast. Eric Granstrom will have that for you tomorrow night at 7. Hockey night uh, on Thursday has the Wenatchee Wild and the Vernon Vipers from a game back in February at the Town Toyota Center. Our checker had the call again Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Friday, another great game of our past. We've got Eastmont and Wenatchee Girls Soccer. From 2018, Sebastian Maraga and Matt Wisen, the dream team, with a play-by-play -play at 7 on Friday night. Saturday at 1.30, we're going back to 2018. We'll have girls bowling between Wenatchee and Eastmont to determine the Big Nine title. Eric Granstrom and Paul Piva had the call there. Saturday night's broadcast is a replay of our first-ever Wenatchee Apple Sox broadcast from last June when they hosted Walla Walla. Then, uh, yeah, so check it out. That gets underway at 6.30 Saturday night on your home for local sports. The NCW Live Channel, and those are just some of the games that people are not playing on this Monday. 32 minutes after the hour, uh, obscure holiday, we have National Tell a Story Day. Nope, not going to do that. National Devil Dog Day. No, it's National Prime Rib Day. Now that is a holiday I can get behind. Oh, my, give it to me. Uh, in case you didn't know, the Prime Rib is, uh, is located between the 8th and the 12th rib on the upper back of the cattle. You cook it low, you cook it slow, uh, you throw in your uh, mushrooms or whatever. Don't forget the pudding. Got to have your pudding. Uh, of course, seasoning is very important to prime rib. Garlic, salt, pepper, uh, onion, rosemary, oregano, thyme. Uh, prime rib with fresh asparagus is a, and, and uh, mashed potatoes is a pretty good treat. Even a little cauliflower. And uh, the dip. Are you au jus or are you horseradish? They say your dip says a lot about your personality when you eat your prime rib. I'm a horseradish guy. Prime rib, center cut. It's what's for breakfast. Happy National Prime Rib Day today. Uh, today in history, there you go. Operation Moolah was launched on this date uh, 67 years ago during the Korean War. The Korean War was winding down. And on April 27th, 1953, uh, basically, the United States Army offered $50,000 to any pilot who defected from the north to the south with a Russian-built MiG jet. The Russian-built MiG jets were way ahead of what the Americans had to offer. They wanted to get their hands on a MiG, a MiG-15. They said any pilot from North Korea or China who wants to fly a fully operational MiG and land it in South Korea uh, we'll give you $50,000. If you're the first pilot to do it, we'll give you $100,000. It was called Operation Moolah. We'll have more on this in September, believe it or not. It didn't work out so good. Uh, basically, nobody actually did it until after the war was over. Look at that. That's the, that's the mouse. That's the first mouse. Xerox, not IBM, not Apple, not any of those big companies. 39 years ago today, April 27, 1981, Xerox introduced the computer mouse, and that's what it looked like. So you would move it around, and you would point, and you would click, and they called it the mouse because it looks like a mouse. Happy birthday to the most indispensable computer tool that there is. Point and click, point and click. Birthday is at 34 minutes after the hour. I just read over the wintertime Ron Chernow's great biography called Grant on Ulysses Simpson Grant, Ulysses S. Grant who was the 16th president of the United States. We always do presidents. He was born in the state in 1822, died of throat cancer in 1885 at the age of 63. It's a great book, and it gave me a new appreciation for Ulysses S. Grant. His actual legal name is Hiriam Ulysses Grant, but when he went off to West Point, they put your initials on your luggage, and his initials would be H-U-G for hug, so he flipped it around and became Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, he was ranked 21st out of 39 in his class at West Point, but of course, and he was broke and had nothing to do. He was working at his father-in-law's tannery when the Civil War broke out, and uh, five years later, he was the head dude, and just a few years after that, he was the president of the United States, and a better president than most people remember. The only president, by the way, buried in New York City, Ulysses S. Grant, born in the state in 1822. 
Rogers Hornsby is the greatest second baseman in baseball history. Born in the state in 1896, died in 1963 at the age of 66. His 424 batting average in 1924 is still the best all-time single season batting average. He batted 424 one year. His 358 career batting average is second all-time, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1942. Nobody liked him. His players hated him. His uh, teammates hated him. The writers hated him. The owners hated him. Management hated him. He was a racist and an anti-Semite, but he was a good baseball player. He had that going for him. Roger Sornsby. Casey Kasem. I grew up in American Top 40. What's the Top 40 songs in America? Well, you tuned in every Sunday for four hours and found out Casey Kasem co-created and hosted American Top 40 for so long. Of course, he was the voice of many, many cartoon characters, including Scooby-Doo and Shaggy. Spent his final years in Gig Harbor. Passed away six years ago. The great Casey Kasem, born in the state in 1932. Chuck Knox, American football coach, Seahawk football coach. Head coach of the Seattle Seahawks from 1983 to 1991. He went 80 and 63. He led the Seahawks to their first four playoff appearances. He was inducted into the Seahawk Ring of Honor, the great Chuck Knox. We miss him a great deal. We lost Chuck a couple of years ago at the age of 86. And finally, I love uh, singers from Peru. If you're a native of Peru and you can belt out a tune, you're going to be on my fan list. And that certainly goes for Eric Fukusaki. Eric Fukusaki, there he is, the great Peruvian singer. He's 29 years old today. Picked up his latest album. 37 minutes after the hour, Mike McNaughty has got an opinion. And then an exclusive interview. Jefferson Robbins, uh, one of our reporters, had a chance to sit down and talk to the governor himself via Zoom on Friday. That conversation, when we come back, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or small. Lombard's has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebrawood and everything in between, it's Lombard's Hardwood Supply on School Street, in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. Kelly's Ace Hardware is open and ready to help with all the essential items you need at this time. Curb service and limited delivery available as well. You can always count on Kelly's when the community calls. Mailboxes Chelan provides important services to our community and will continue to do so on new limited hours. Whatever your shipping and receiving need, Jerry and Sherry are here to help from 9 to 3 weekdays. Green Dot Subs is open for takeout business. All those fabulous sandwiches that people drive miles to get are still available at both locations in Manson and Chelan. Call ahead and they will make one for you. Mike's Meats and Seafood is open for business. All your favorite items, including ready-to-heat meals, individually packed to your order. Enter at the north door of the Pibus Market from 10 to 6 daily. Buyer at the Pibus Market will continue offering to-go, curbside, and delivery services from 12 to 8 p.m. daily. The menu is available on Facebook or online at Visconti's.com. All the fresh produce, breads, and many other hard-to-find items are still available at Royal Produce at the Pibus Market. Use the west side entrance and get what you need today. Save Mart remains open to serve our community with its huge selection of furniture, mattresses, and appliances. The Parts and Service Department is ready to make sure you have what you need to keep your household functioning during these unusual times. Menachee Power Sports is keeping its Parts and Service Departments open to serve the greater community. Agriculture and others depend on these machines to continue to produce and transport the goods and services we need. If you have a pest problem, Harvest Valley Pest Control will remain available to take care of your needs. Call 797-0090 and let us know how we can make your home pest-free. My name is Anaisa Lemus and I teach at John Newberry Elementary. I had a tooth in the front that was just always causing me problems. It, it was just happening so regularly. I went to go get a root canal done and the root canal didn't help a whole lot because when it came back, both of my parents went to uh, Dr. Divis's office. They really recommended him because he had done such a great job on their teeth. I went and really have had a really pleasant experience with him. He just made me real, feel really at ease with everything. He was really confident with what he was doing. He said, you know, this is one of his favorite parts of his job, which really made it easier for me because, you know, when you're really passionate about something, you know, they're going to do a good job. As a teacher, my students, you know, I'll tell them randomly sometimes, oh yeah, with my fake tooth, they're always so shocked. Like, what? It looks like your real tooth. And I'm really happy with the results now. 
This is Dr. John Divis. Please call us today. The world around us is constantly changing. Major employers in North Central Washington have expressed a need for capable, qualified engineering technologists who can think critically and solve problems. And at Wenatchee Valley College, we listened. We are pleased to offer a Bachelor of Applied Science Engineering Technology degree to provide you with a world of new opportunities. Your time is now. The future is waiting for you. Like Mad Dog McNaughton, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, a cool scene in the movie La La Land, you know, that flick that was almost best picture a while ago. <laughs> the two main characters, Mia and Seb, were dancing and singing while well, they're commenting on a waste, what a waste of a nice evening it was, as they weren't at that point romantically involved. Now, Rosie and I both looked at each other and we kind of grinned during that scene because many years ago, we were on a church trip to Israel. Um, I was going out for a walk and I ran into Rosie in the lobby of the hotel and I asked her, hey, she wanted to come on a walk with me. Well, we ended up sitting on a dock looking at a full moon over the Mediterranean Sea and we joked about how romantic it was and how it was just too bad that we weren't two different people romantically involved. Well, over 40 years later, I guess we were the right people after all. Yeah, I know, this is schmaltzy, but that's too bad. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Dr. Wayne Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic and Rehab Clinic is on North Mission Street. If you've been injured on the job, in an automobile accident, or a sports injury, call today and try his wraparound services. Call 884-HELP. That's 884-4357. Call Dr. Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic and Rehab Clinic today. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today, 509-663-1710. Since the minute we closed, we have been focused on our responsibility for keeping our teams, our members, and our community safe for when we reopen. So we've been aggressively adopting best-in-class sanitizing technologies, processes, and member guidelines. We're building that into our daily operations right now, and we're calling that WORKS Member Shield system. It's still going to take each of us to protect all of us, but with WORKS Member Shield, we think that's possible. And we are back still dealing with overcast conditions and 50 degrees outside on this Monday morning. In an interview conducted Friday, NCW Live's Jefferson Robbins had a chance to sit down with Governor Jay Inslee and they talked about all things coronavirus. With a limited restart to construction, Inslee says the opening of Washington's economy has begun, but we can't afford to backslide against the pandemic. Hi, this is Jay Inslee. Hi, Governor Inslee. It's Jefferson Robbins with the NCW Life Channel. How are you, sir? Great, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Good, I appreciate you taking the time, sir. Um, one of the questions that came to mind, you just uh, issued new rules on allowing certain forms of construction to go forward, uh, construction that was already in progress, already permitted. Last week and the week before, our two counties here, Douglas and Chelan counties, uh, passed their own resolutions trying to, to push this uh, forward as well. Do you feel like the rules that you've uh, issued today are, are 
the kind of things those counties were looking for? Are they going to satisfy Eastern Washington County's desire for construction to reopen? Well, I don't know. And I, you know, this is an iterative process. This is one first step to reopening our economy. And we hope that there'll be more. Uh, so we're going to continue to listen to people about their ideas. I think we'll learn from these first steps. Uh, I want to compliment the, uh, the unions that have been working with the contracting community to come to a consensus about what safety protocols will be so people will be safe when they work, so they're safe and they don't take disease home to their families. And we, and they helped us come to a consensus about those protocols. So we're going to watch this in operation. Hopefully it will allow us to open up more construction over time as soon as uh, we, we test out these protocols and assuming that this would not result in any increased infection rate. And this is something we're intensely interested in. We don't want to see our gains. We have had gains. We have been at the curve. Washingtonians have been very committed to this in huge numbers. And as a result, we reduced the, the growth rate of the infection. But we don't want to see it to go back up. So um, time will tell. I'm glad we've taken this first step. And I want to thank everyone for helping us move forward on this. Well, Washingtonians and Eastern Washingtonians in particular are, are very interested in recreation and very interested in hunting and fishing. And uh, there's rallies that have taken place in the Tri-Cities area. There's one scheduled this weekend for the Wenatchee uh, Columbia River area concerning fishing. Um, when do you think limitations on things like fishing access could be lifted? And, and similarly, might our hunting seasons go forward after May 4th? Well, we're considering those questions right now. We've had some good discussions in the last few days about that. And we may have more to say about that just in the next several days. All of these things were designed to reduce the interactions of people. When you're driving to the fishing pole with your buddy and you're interacting and, and you stop by the convenience store, uh, the whole goal of these things were to reduce the physical interactions. That has had a beneficial impact. We think we reduced those by 50% or so in the state. And that has been a success because it has reduced the number of people who are getting the infection and the number of people who would ever, otherwise die. We lost over 650 of our fellow Washingtonians, as you know. This, this has been a very tragic event for so many families. So it has had some success, but now we believe we can look at opening up some of these things. And as I said, we're considering those next steps. And I know people want to go hunting fishing. Um, one of the happiest days of my life was I knocked him down Lake Victoria after a five-hour hike up in, uh, in, the, in the Icicle drainage. So I know people are anxious. We'll make some decisions in the next few days. Some of those sentiments uh, having to do with hunting and fishing and the sentiments I've seen expressed about construction uh, sort of come back to the idea that eastern Washington and rural Washington are just distinct enough from urban Washington to perhaps live and play by different rules under the coronavirus pandemic. Um, what's your response to that particular idea? Well, we wish that this virus was just, uh, you know, walled off in the Puget Sound area, but it's not. We've had big outbreaks in Yakima. We've seen a meat packing plant in Tri-Cities have to shut down. We currently have a large outbreak in, a, in an agricultural uh, workers camp in the Chelan area. And then Adams County had a very significant increase. So unfortunately, this virus crosses county lines, and it's very dangerous, and we've lost people in, in East Washington. Uh, there's a lot of tragedies there. So I don't think it's so different that we should not uh, be aggressive in our efforts. Now, there might be some things that we can have a more targeted approach, for instance, perhaps, and we've not made decisions on this, but like for elective surgery, when you look at the possibility of hospital by hospital, if hospitals can show that they have enough personal protective equipment, they have enough surge capacity, it might allow us to relax the restrictions on elective surgery. That might help some hospitals in East Washington and other places as well. But the fact of the matter is, is every community can eventually look like New York City if we don't stay on top of this piece. Glad Washingtonians are, are really uh, committed to, to winning this battle. Then there's not an option here. Every county uh, in Washington has at least doubled the number of unemployment claims uh, since last year, and Employment Security Department has had 
some trouble keeping up with the demand on the system. Um, do you feel confident that ESD is able to, to meet those needs now going forward? We're expecting more jobless claims this weekend, for instance. Well, no, the, we have been deluged by this you know, tidal wave of applicants. This was like seven, eight times more than in the height uh, in a single week of the Great Recession. So we are building up our capacity to try to respond as quickly as possible to this tsunami. And we're hiring about 200 people a week to be able to help process those claims. Uh, the Employment Security Department has also adopted new technology try to channel some of these inquiries to make them more efficient using new technology. Uh, but there is going to be, unfortunately, some frustration of people right now. I feel it deeply. Look, people are waiting for their claims. That's extremely frustrating. That's why we've dedicated every possible resource to uh, getting the system to be as, as functioning as possible. There is good news is that we are told, at least as a few days ago, we were getting the checks out. Once the claims were approved, the checks were being delivered in a timely fashion. But we want to get the processing of the claims much more rapidly. And we're going to do everything we can to do that as soon as humanly possible. What is all this? I mean, this has changed norms for a lot of people. Um, what does this experience tell you about the ways that we, we live and the way our systems and our government operates in Washington? And, and how they might have to change permanently? Well, I guess what I've seen is a lot of creativity. It's convinced me again that Washingtonians are a very creative, innovative people. And we have, we have found new ways of doing business, certainly electronically, we have in our state government. Companies have, have seen, shown that they can operate remotely uh, with a lot of great success, frankly. I, I think one thing coming out of this is that we're going to find a lot more communication electronically so we don't have to commute, frankly, and save a lot of money on gas. Uh, that might be one thing coming out of here. Uh, the other thing as I've learned is that when people work together, they can do really big things. I think Washington is as united as it has ever been around a central mission, and that's the mission is to defeat this virus. So I'll pull the other day, uh, I think it was this morning, like 75 or 77 percent of people were committed to this mission and believe it has been a success. You know, we couldn't get 77 percent to agree on, you know, what day was Thanksgiving usually in the state of Washington. And we're seeing massive compliance. People are following this. They are staying home in large numbers. We've reduced physical interactions by maybe 50 percent. And this is really hard slogging. This is just tough. I mean, you know, my brother and sister are on East Wenatchee. They don't get to see, you know, uh, my 102-year-old mother-in-law is free for And this is hard work, but people are doing it because they understand that life itself is at stake. I'm just glad to be, uh, be able to see how proud I am of our state right now. The rest of the country is paying attention. And a lot of calls asking how we've been successful here. But I'd like to, to brag about our state. Governor, what do you think is the first thing that you will do when stay home, stay healthy is you're able to set that aside and, and you're able to do something that these uh, ground rules right now forbid? Well, I will go wrestle with my uh, four uh, grandchildren and then go visit my 102-year-old mother-in-law and take her some flowers. Looking forward to that. Very good. I appreciate your time today, sir, and I wish you the best of health. Thank you. Wash your hands. And you're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley. We'll be right back. Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike McNaughty on the NCW Life Channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. 
featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill located at the beautiful Highlander Golf Course in East Wenatchee. Highlander Grill offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner with dine-in or takeout options. Highlander Bar and Grill's friendly staff is here to serve you seven days a week. Call for reservations Friday night prime rib dinner. Contact Shalane, Highlander Grill's site coordinator, to schedule your corporate event or special occasion today. Mike's Meats and Seafood is open for business. All your favorite items, including ready-to-heat meals, individually packed to your order. Enter at the north door of the Pibus Market from 10 to 6 daily. Get your yard sign or banner made for your graduating senior today. Order from your local sign company, Color FX in Cashmere. Banners, signs, and more. Call Color FX today. Wheats Cafe fresh made breakfast, lunch, and lattes are still available for takeout. Call ahead, order online, or stop on by. Support this local business, Weeds Cafe. And we are back with just a couple of minutes to go on this Monday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Coons. Still got some high clouds out there sitting at 50 degrees, haven't moved much, and we're looking at a wet and windy day today. As far as the occasional light rain, for the Wenatchee Valley, a passing light shower is possible between now and about 12 noon. Most of the rain <clears throat> will be to the east of us, often the uh, Lilac City of Spokane and often the Idaho uh, Panhandle. Uh, so just a slight chance of light rain this morning, but the story today is really going to be the winds. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Temperatures will be about normal for this time of the year. Uh, and then again this afternoon, we'll see quite a bit of sun breaks, but boy, is it going to get gusty. Let's go ahead and throw that slide up. This is your wind gust forecast for today. Now, the sustained winds, this is the peak wind gust, as you can see, for the Wenatchee Valley. Uh, we can see gusts, uh, the, the occasional gust at about 35 to 40 miles an hour. Wind are still down in Ellensburg. That's usually the rule of thumb down there, near 40 to 45 mile an hour gusts out of Moses Lake. And you see that blue circle. That's where they're worried most about patchy blowing dust. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the farmers have already plowed their fields. They had some much needed rain, but still not nearly enough. And so there's enough loose soil out there that could really make driving difficult. Visibility anyway, along the, uh, the I-90 corridor between Moses Lake and Ritzville, which is right in the middle of that area of concern all the way down into the Tri-Cities. And of course, any kind of grass fire, or wildfire, that gets any kind of momentum could really take off with these wind gusts uh, later on this afternoon. The sustained winds are gonna be strong enough. You throw in the wind gusts uh, out in Moses Lake and Ritzville at 35 to 40 miles an hour, and yikes, things get a little hairy. So hopefully everybody will be on their best behavior and simply not take those kinds of chances. Let's take a look at your forecast in depth from the National Weather Service, as I mentioned before. Uh, the, the weather is going to be kind of all over the board. Very, very, uh, very interesting weather. It's got, we've got scattered showers possible this morning, and then we'll have some sunshine later on this afternoon, and it's going to be breezy. A west wind pretty consistent at about 13 to 21 miles an hour. We can see gusts as high as, as you saw in the graphic there, anywhere between 35 to 40 miles an hour. Late in the afternoon for those gusts, slight chance of light rain. We'll top off at about 70 degrees. Clear tonight, 42 for the overnight low. It'll be breezy into the evening hours. Again, a northwest wind pretty consistent, uh, right around 20 miles an hour. It will decrease after midnight, but we could still get those gusts between 35 and 40 miles an hour, even into the evening hours, even past sunset, which is 8.08 tonight is a possibility. Looking ahead to Tuesday, it looks to be about the nicest day of the week. Uh, lots of sunshine, no rain in the forecast, no wind in the forecast. Just a brief little ridge of high pressure. It's going to make things pretty nice. I have about... 72 degrees on Tuesday. Clouds are back Tuesday night, 49 for the overnight low. Wednesday, lots of clouds, just the slightest chance of some light rain and considerably milder. We'll get up to 77 degrees on Wednesday. Don't get used to that because we cool right back down to a good 10 degrees on Thursday with partly sunny skies. We'll be lucky to get to 67 or 68 on Thursday, 42 for the overnight low on Thursday night. Lots of sunshine Friday, maybe 70 degrees, maybe. It'll take us a while to get up that ladder because it's going to be pretty cool overnight on Thursday night. I guess jump ahead of the weekend because we can. Saturday, 
Uh, partly sunny, about 70, and then a slight chance of rain and a high of 64 on Sunday. And that's it for us. Everybody have a good and safe Monday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>